Hello YouTube. Today we're going to discuss the act of swinging a sword to get jacked and why it just won't work. I was inspired to make this video because it's now becoming more and more popular to embrace the way of the sword as a way to get bigger and stronger. And I'm seeing more and more young men who are embracing this practice thinking it will get them results. So I want to make sure I save these people a lot of time. But before we go on to discussing the method and the issues that come with it, the reason why it won't work, I first and foremost want to focus on the why, because it's a bit weird that in 2024, where gym culture is mainstream and there are cheap gyms everywhere, you would have dudes who would say, fuck all of that, fuck free weights, fuck calisthenics, instead I'm going to pick up a piece of iron and I'm going to swing it back and forth, and that will be my approach to fitness. Surely this mindset comes from somewhere. And it does. This trend is actually very easy to pinpoint. And in my opinion, it comes from two main traits. The number one being that it's cool. I perfectly understand the appeal because the idea in itself of growing a muscular body just by swinging a sword is super, super badass. And this is typically the type of thing that dudes do. You know, if you're a dude, there should be a long list of things in your brain that you think are cool and you can't really explain why. It's just part and parcel of being a man. So, for example, things like dinosaurs. If you're a dude, when you were younger, you had a dinosaur phase. You were obsessed with them. And to this day, if I tell you T-Rex, Spinosaurus, Allosaurus, there should be a light bulb going on in your brain that says, Cool, dinosaurs are, are super fucking rad. And you will stay like this until the day you die. That's perfectly normal. Giant robots. We are obsessed with giant robots. Why? Because a, a giant robot is a robot. So it's a machine. It's like a, a, a mechanic gigantic car. That's super fucking cool. And it's giant. And as dudes, we love everything that is giant. We love tournaments. We love the idea of men fighting each other in dark caves to see who is the strongest man on, man on earth. Even in this modern age where we have microwaves and cars and we have shitty, boring jobs, we're still obsessed with battles. We're also obsessed with stuff like samurai. If you are a guy, most likely you like samurais or you like some version of superheroes. That is also in our DNA. It's in our nature. And likewise, sword battling and picking up a sword and anything medieval also appeals to us. So I'm not surprised at all that so many men would be so enticed by the idea of swinging a sword because I also am as well. I find the idea extremely appealing. Then there is the second reason. And the second reason is obvious to anyone who has read Berserk. It's because of Guts. It is Guts that has started this trend because the character of Guts in Berserk is the guy who trains with swords and who gets massive from it. And if there is another inclination of the male spirit that is immediately evident, it's the fact that we are obsessed with getting bigger and getting stronger. And Guts is really the mix of these two things. He is big and strong and he also wields a sword. So naturally, young men are going to want to look like him, they're going to want to imitate him and they're going to start doing exactly what he does. The issue is that if your goal is to resemble Guts, doing what he does, meaning swing the sword, is actually the worst thing that you can do. But as an aside, it's not just Guts that somehow amalgamates all of the things that men find cool. It's even Berserk, because if you look at Berserk, what does Berserk have? It has giant monsters, so that's giant and monsters, two things that men are obsessed with. Dinosaurs, there are dinosaurs in Berserk that are monsters and they're giant and they speed fire, holy shit, and it's a medieval fantasy. So naturally this explains why men are so obsessed with Berserk and with the training of Guts. And indeed in the story of Berserk, we see that Guts gets pretty jacked from swinging the sword. The issue is that, as I said in real life, this training is unlikely to lead you to a good physique, because the action of swinging a sword itself is inherently horrible for muscle building. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you exactly why. Because if you're like me, most likely you are curious, right? What are the reasons that make swinging a sword so terrible? How could it be? Well, it's for three main points. The number one being that the biomechanics of the lift are not aligned with hypertrophy and muscle building. 
The number two is that the implications of moving a heavy object back and forth in the same plane of motion is also going to become an issue down the line for reasons I'm going to explain. And three, the final reason and the most important is the fact that there is no progressive overload when you swing a sword and progressive overload is the main factor of hypertrophy. So let's take our time and dissect every single one of these factors because most likely if you clicked on this video you are someone who is somewhat interested by the topic of swinging the sword maybe even someone who does it themselves so i want to make sure i don't just tell you swing a sword bad i actually give you the reasons so as to make sure that you then understand what would work and you can go on to build a massive and strong physique which is something that we'll talk about at the end because I will not just debunk in this video, I'm also going to give you solutions. So let's start with the debunking and the explanation. The number one factor I told you that made swing your sword bad for muscle building is the biomechanics. The biomechanics of a lift or a movement is very simple. It's which joint is required to accomplish the movement that you're doing and which muscles are going to be activated as a result. When we look at what it means to swing a sword, there's really only a finite amount of patterns and ways you can do it. You can do it straight down from the top, straight up from the bottom, diagonally down to the left, diagonally down to the right, diagonally up from the left, from the right, and left and right strikes horizontally. After that, you can also thrust the sword forward, but I don't really see many people train like this when they swing the sword. And actually, I don't really see people do anything else outside of an overhead swing. So this is the one that you see guts do all the time. And it's also the pattern that you're going to have a tendency to copy. And if we look at that pattern, we see that in the gym, this would correlate to a vertical pattern that trains the shoulders and the upper back in priority with some hips and core involvement if the person steps in, and that's a big if, because most of the time when you see people do that, they swing the sword, but their feet and their legs are not moving. Anyone who is actually a trained kendo master or a trained swordsman would tell you that this is not the proper way to swing a sword. You are supposed to step in as you swing, but the people that use it strictly for muscle building don't do that. So we're not even going to include the legs in this equation. It's mostly going to be shoulders, traps. And if we are to decorticate the movement, and if we are to compare it to things that you would do in the gym, we see that when you lift the sword up in front of you, you get mostly shoulders and traps because it mimics a front raise. And then when you strike, you mimic a pullover machine and a pullover pattern. So that would recruit the upper back in priority. And that's actually the one pattern of sword swinging that is going to target the upper body. Because if we look at the rest of them, like an horizontal chop, for example, that's mostly going to be core because the movement is a rotation of the core. Yes, you're going to get some involvement of the limbs and upper body, but really not as much as you would think. And the same goes for an underhand swing which is something that surprised me personally because when I looked at the movement, I thought to myself, okay, that should give you a decent amount of shoulders and biceps, for example. But most studies that have analyzed a similar movement in the golf swing have found that actually it's mostly legs. It's mostly lower body, stuff like the quads and the adductor muscles, all the ones who are being recruited in priority. So we see that based on biomechanics, the muscles that are the most likely to grow from sword swinging aren't necessarily the ones that people think of when they start doing it. I don't know many people who thought that they would grow their adductors by swinging a sword around. You always think, oh, I want bigger traps, bigger upper back, bigger chest even. But if we look at the muscle group list I just outlined, the chest is not involved at all. It is actually entirely ignored. Same for the biceps, they are mostly ignored, which are the muscle groups that people look at when they look at guts, for example, and try to replicate. So that's already a massive issue. But to that, you could tell me, okay, the overhead swing is still recruiting the upper body. So you'll still get some muscular gains from that, right? And in a sense, you are correct. But this is where we get to the second part of why swing a sword is so bad. It's not just that most sword swings aren't actually going to recruit the muscles you want to grow. It's that even the one that does the overhead swing is still plagued with issues. The first one being overuse injuries. 
There is a reason why most bodybuilding programs include several different movement patterns to train the same muscle group. It's not just to avoid plateau or to feed volume, it's also so as to make sure that you don't always lift in the same axis of movement. Because if you do, you'll find that over time, you'll start to develop somewhere and tear on the tendons. I think that we've all experienced that at some point when you're obsessed with bench press and you do it all the time, three times a week, and eventually you start getting some shoulder pain, you start getting some bicep tendon pain. Why? Not because the lift is dangerous, but because it's the only one you do. So over time, your body gets taxed by it. And this can even happen to people who don't lift. Look, like, look at the amount of people with a blue collar job who end up with carpal tunnel syndrome only because they do these small repetitive movements of the wrist, which eventually aggravates the tendon. And that's, again, just moving a fucking mouse around that doesn't even weigh 300 grams. Now, imagine how much worse this can become with an object as heavy as a sword with a dynamic motion over your head. I guarantee you that you can develop some pretty nasty pathologies in your spine, in your thoracic spine, for example. And that's really not something that you want. Because keep in mind that... Most people, most sword practitioners, do that with swords, with replicas of swords that weigh less than one kilos. If you look at people who do kendo and who use the bamboo stick, a bamboo stick is 300 grams, sometimes 500. People who do fencing, for example, a fencing stick for practice is like 500 grams. It's not even half of a kilo on purpose because they know for a fact that if you move a heavy object back and forth with speed, you're going to develop some pathologies of the tendon. It's absolutely impossible to avoid. Now, I know for a fact that you're not going to do what Guts does because in the manga, Guts' sword supposedly weights around 150 kilo. Some sources even go up as far as saying it's 400 pounds. So 180 kilo, which naturally no one could lift. A sword like that, even the strongest man on earth couldn't pick up. So forget about actually being able to swing this thing. It's impossible. But I found that if you are to try and get yourself a replica of good sword or in any giant swords in reality online, every single time they weigh at least five kilos. They are at least five times heavier than the heavier swords than people who do kendo, for example, would use for practice, which is more than enough to cause some serious overuse injuries. But it's not the only reason why swinging a heavy sword is actually so detrimental. It's also because it's going to create more momentum. And you could think that it's good because it makes the movement more difficult. But in reality, it makes it more difficult in a way that is going to reduce the amount of muscle you're going to be able to build. And I'm not telling you anything new here if you've ever tried to swing a sword. If you ever had a real sword in your hands, you know that it's not like in the movies. These things are very, very hard to move. Same with katanas. I know that in most anime and manga and even movies that replicate the samurai era, you see people fly through the air with their katanas and they go like, ta -ta 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 -ta! like it's nothing in their hands, like they are moving a spaghetti stick. But in reality, a katana is very heavy. It's very hard to move around with it. If you try to hold one in each hand, good luck striking anyone, because anytime you do just do this, it's going to just carry you forward. And the same goes for a sword. Every time you swing the sword in front of you, you create momentum that is trying to drag you forward. So now it's less an exercise for the muscle and more an exercise for you to be able to control the inertia of the blade. And that's because most of the weight of the blade is the blade itself. So it's far away from your body and that creates a very strong lever arm that makes the movement more difficult. Now, what happens if you extend your arms and you strike away from you? Well, you just created an even greater lever arm, which makes the movement even more difficult. And to be clear, that's sometimes something that we seek as bodybuilders. But we always try to make sure it doesn't get too much. This is the reason why bodybuilders, for example, when they lift, they don't lift just random scraps of metal that they found laying around. It's also the reason why we moved away from stones. It's because stones are cumbersome because it's impossible to guess the lever arm, it's all over the place. Instead, we standardized it by using barbells and dumbbells. That way we know that whatever weight we put on that thing is going to be directly connected to our ability to challenge the muscle. There is not going to be a, an enigma factor that makes the lift super difficult for no payback whatsoever. Because if the lift, if the movement you're doing 
creates too much inertia or has a bad lever arm, even if it's very difficult, it's also going to result in you not being able to recruit the muscles you want to recruit. So the results you'll get at the end are going to be pretty miserable. And this is also why machines and cables are so popular with people who just try to build muscle. It's because they standardize the amount of tension that you put on the muscle without you even having to try. The machine does it for you. So they correct the strength curve and you get the best possible tension for any muscle you want to train without the need of any technique. The sword swinging does the exact opposite. Sword swinging and controlling the momentum of the blade is all about technique. And the more technique is required, the less time you have to spend on hypertrophy points. But there's also something else that these machines do that the sword will prevent you from doing. And that is a proper negative. If you train for bodybuilding or for looks, you should know that the negative is a very important part of the rep. Some people skip it or they go through it as fast as possible. And these people usually don't have good results. The problem is that if you swing a sword, it's not really up to you. You don't get to decide to skip the negative or not because the mechanism behind the swing of the sword means that when you go about it, the momentum of the object is going to launch you forward and you're effectively just trying to prevent it from ripping your hands open. So you're just getting half of the reps because the other half of the rep is just you holding onto a moving object with no real lengthening of the muscles involved. So that's half of the results you could have expected that just vanish in thin air. But it doesn't even stop there. If it did, it would already be terrible. But no, there is then the cherry on top of the shit cake. And that is the fact that if you attempt to build muscle using a sword, you will find that you will be limited at some point in your plateau because the sword doesn't offer you any opportunity to progressively overload. Because the sword, unless you have one that's highly customizable or you have like... 15 different swords like you would have dumbbells always weights the same weight. The sword is always a given five pounds or six pounds. You're always swinging the same amount of resistance. And this is a death sentence. If I gave you a pair of 15 kilogram dumbbells and I told you, hey, get jacked off of it. You think it would be easy? Soon enough, you tell me, hey, I need 20 kilos now. I need 25 kilos, 30 kilos. How else am I going to progress? Am I supposed to just do reps upon reps upon reps? Well, with a sword, that's really all you can do. So now your ability to progressively overload is either do more reps, do more sets, which is really the same thing. You just get more volume with the same intensity, or you can reduce the rest time in between sessions of swinging or slow down your movement, which as we already established is not going to be possible because half of the rep is you trying to make sure that the sword doesn't just fly out of your hands. So that's out of the equation. And actually, it doesn't mean that it's not possible to make your training harder when you swing a sword. It's just that the means that you're going to use to make it harder cannot compare to the efficiency of just putting more weight on the bar. This is an absolute truth that anyone who trains with weight gets to realize at some point. Yes, progressively overload is not just more weight on the bar. That is reductive and it leads to plateaus and injuries. But... If you want to keep getting bigger, you're going to have at some point or the other to get stronger and that involves lifting more weight. So every effective strategy of progressive overload relies one way or the other on the ultimate notion that they eventually make you stronger. They all point to that one direction and sword swinging unfortunately doesn't do that. Because if you look at guts, in the golden age arc, when we see him swing the sword, we also see that he understands this because he attaches plates to the sword. So he makes the sword heavier on purpose so as to increase the intensity of the training. The problem being that even if you manage to do that, you would just hyphen the specs of the sword that makes it about a bad implement for hypertrophy. Because the more plates you put on that sword, the more unbalanced, uh, unbalanced it becomes. Because now the weight is even more poorly distributed. So now it creates even more momentum and it forces you to rely even more on your ability to just do no negative at all. So it wouldn't actually be a solution. And this also applies, by the way, to any other movement you might want to do with the sword, because I've also seen people do lunges or squats with them, even bench press. That doesn't change the issue. The issue is that you're still stuck with an implement that is poorly balanced with horrible lever arm, and that is always the same weight. So now you're going to do your squats and your bench press with the same weight. 
your legs are so much stronger than your upper body. It simply doesn't work. So overall, these are all the reasons that make swinging a sword a fundamentally broken method to gain size and strength. And if you don't believe me, if you're not convinced by my demonstration, believe the medieval knights. Because even knights from back in the Middle Ages knew that. They knew that just swinging a sword wasn't enough, which is why they also did resistance training on the side. And when I say resistance training, I don't just mean wrestling. I don't just mean things that you would think would make them better at combat. I mean methods that were put in place specifically to make them bigger and stronger. And when they had to pick these methods, what they would do is, they would do, for example, carry heavy pieces of armor. The young squires, starting age 10, would be tasked to move armor from one part of the castle to another. That is a weighted carry. They would also pick up and they would throw stones. That is a form of hip hinge and a form of vertical pressing. They would also go on weighted runs with their armors. That is something that is not widely known, but they would build engines like this, which is a form of rocking. They would also do weighted pull-ups. Yes, I know, shocking. If you're European, your ancestors 500, 600 years ago were already doing that exercise. They would do weighted pull-ups on ladders with their armors on. And that's not the only orthodox exercise they did for muscle building because we also have documents, written documents, that show that knights also used methods such as the military press. So they would press overhead. They would also do a lot of push-ups. We have a ton of very interesting descriptions of these knights that show that they were always with a very narrow waist, with very broad shoulders, and their chests were always described as full because they trained it. If you swing a sword, you can swing a sword all day, every day. It doesn't matter. It's not a pattern that targets the chest. So these muscles came from somewhere, and that somewhere was a proper resistance training program. So, if you enjoy swinging a sword around because you find it cool and you don't really care about getting bigger, that's fine. But keep in mind that lifting weights on the side would also make you progress faster at sword swinging. Because even the people who did it professionally on the battlefield to be able to survive knew that for a fact. But maybe you're someone who actually doesn't care that much about the skill aspect of the sword. You picked it up because you wanted to get bigger. And if you are in that category, I have just the thing for you. I have created a GUTS program you can access for free. It is in the description and it's going to give you two templates you can follow in the gym to be able to replicate the physique of your favorite character. But that's for those of you again that really only care about the physique because that program is not specific to sword swinging. So for the rest of you guys who are in love with the iron, I have created a knight program, a program that replicates exactly what an ancient medieval knight would be doing to supplement his sword swinging abilities. And yes, for those of you who have been avid watchers of the channel for a long time and who have caught my medieval uh, lifting wisdom, you know that back then, it was two years ago, I promised to make a knight program and I never forgot. I just was waiting for the perfect opportunity to release that program for you, and that day is today. So, if you go into the description, you will find a free program, three days a week, full body split, that is going to include all the lifts that medieval knights used to train, plus, of course, some modern addition to build a body resilient enough to survive the Black Plague and strong enough to retake Jerusalem. Included will also be a draft, of what the training week would look like. So I'm going to give you exactly what days you have to go into the gym, what days you can do your sword swinging, and what days you're going to do conditioning. For forms of conditioning, likewise, I actually researched what medieval knights used to do. And so I'm going to give you three different options. You can do rocking, so you go on walks with a heavy backpack to replicate the armor run that the knights used to do. You can do swimming because the knights believed that swimming was a great way to build endurance, flexibility, and muscle strength. And also rock climbing, which was a favorite of theirs. Then, as I said, you will have the days you practice sword swinging. So if I look at the schedule I have for you here, it's going to be something like this. On Monday, I'll have you do full body one. On Tuesday, you'll do your sword swinging practice. On Wednesday, you'll do your full body two. On Thursday, you'll do rocking, swimming, or rock climbing, your conditioning work. On Friday, you'll do your full body three. On Saturday, you'll do your sword swinging practice. And on Sunday, you'll do again rocking, swimming, or rock climbing. 
And you might question this because you're only doing sword swinging twice a week. This is because in my opinion, it is enough to progress. That way you will allow the work that you do in the gym to feed your progress at sword swinging. If you're the type of person who instead would prefer the romantic approach of just swinging a sword every single day, I perfectly get it. The doing egg swing every day is very popular, but as I already explained, this is not going to get you the best results at all. If you want to do that, be my guest. But if what you want is actually results getting bigger and getting stronger, I recommend you actually follow what I outlined. And when it comes to the full body, it goes as such. For body one, I have you do weighted pull-ups and one arm military press. If you want to replace the one arm by a normal overhead press, you can. I have you do one arm because that's what the knights used to do. Then you do Zurcher Good Mornings to replicate a stone picking event and Russian twists. You can naturally do something else than the Zurcher Good Morning. Again, this is historic. Then you have weighted push ups and preacher curls for the biceps and the chest. Then you have walking lunges and Y raises for the quads and shoulders. You will find that the full body template is also going to replicate the philosophy and mentality of the knights at the time who tried to build total body resilience. Every muscle gets hit, which is why it's a full body. It's the perfect split for that. Then for full body too, I'll have you do some zercher squats and upright rows, some croc rows and triceps extension, some kettlebell swings and some spider curls. The kettlebell swing is very in line with what an underhand sword swing would look like. And then you'll do some floor press and cable finger curls. The floor press can be replaced by a bench press if you want. Likewise, it's because we know that knights used to press rocks on their backs. So that's what a floor press would be like. And then the last day of the full body is weighted dips and decline sit-ups, farmer carries that are very important and landmine press, weighted chin-ups and face pulls and leg press and hammer curls. This is just me going through the program very quickly to give you a broad idea of what you will get. But again, the entirety of it is available for free in the description with every single rep range and the amount of sets you are supposed to do. And that is going to conclude this video. So I hope it was informative. I hope if you were the type of person who was into sword swinging, you learned something today and you were able to modify your approach so as to get the best results possible. If you are going to be one of the many knights that are going to jump on the program, let me know in the comments. I'm always interested to hear your feedback. And I also want to see throughout the weeks and the months if you get the progress on it that you expected. And if you want to thank me for my work, you can always do it by supporting the channel on my coffee page. It's the first link in the description. You can really donate or pledge any amount you want. $3 a month is already tremendous for me because it allows me to keep putting a lot of work and effort into these videos. As always, thank you for your support. I hope that you have a good time in your training because at the end of the day, it's what really matters. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.